Ten centuries ago this year, a lady of the Heian court created a masterpiece of Japanese literature believed to be the first novel written in the world. I'm talking about The Tale of Genji, written by Lady Murasaka Shigibu. Recently, Washington University in St. Louis assembled Genji scholars from Pomona College, University of Wisconsin at Madison, Columbia University, and Princeton University to mark the thousandth anniversary of the Heian Court Tale. In a roundtable discussion by the visiting experts and cresting with a lecture by Columbia University's Dr. Haro Shinane, the foremost expert on the tale of Genji in the West. For those who may not be familiar with this tale of medieval Japan, Dr. Charo Diecheveri from the University of Wisconsin at Madison begins. The title tells us it's a story of a Genji, and a Genji is a particular kind of person in pre-modern Japan. It's a person who was born into the imperial family, but was demoted to a commoner for political reasons. Over the course of the 54 chapters, it transforms from a story of, of frustrated political ambitions into the emotional complications of, well, the search for love, companionship, and the problems with settling. So it's about politics, it's about ambition, but it's also about human relationships. The connection to human relationships expressed by Dr. Diecheveri may be why the text has inspired poets and artists for generations in Japan and beyond its borders. Film, theater, dance, and opera all have used the Genji to spawn creations that have been enjoyed the world over. But is there more than relationship that has caused the Genji to be translated in over 30 languages? Dr. Jamie Neward from Washington University in St. Louis. There's just so much in it about the delicacies and difficulties of dealing with very common, almost universal human emotions, love and loss and longing for things you can't have and how you deal with that issue of substitution and whether you can find replacements for the things you don't have but that you want and all of these kinds of things. Um, they're wonderful opportunities to think about just life and love. Dr. Lynn Miyake from Pomona College. The wonderful thing about the Genji is the fact that if the readers take it seriously and engage with it, that it has many things to teach them. But I think what's the most fun about it is it's not the stodgy classic, that it is actually something that one can claim for oneself in very particular and personal ways. Dr. Michael Emmerich from Princeton University. The more you get into Genji, the more it gets into you. And I think letting, say, a work from a thousand years ago get into you uh, is one way to expand the potentials of your own sensibility. Dr. Haro Shanane, the foremost expert in the West from Columbia University, discusses the text from a different perspective. From the perspective of history of the novel, from the perspective of women's literature, it's uh, a major landmark. Dr. Shinane goes on to point out the novel's great sensitivity to the seasons, to the arts, to color, to paper, to incense, the whole variety of sensibilities that we don't really have, at least to that depth, in the West. So it's it kind of encapsulates many different art forms in a single novel. Combining shared human experiences, politics, and aesthetics, it is no wonder why the text has not only survived, but thrived. I think that the particular way that Genji mixes aesthetics and politics and scandal really can be very thought-provoking. It can really make you rethink the connection of, of literature to politics in a productive way. It is ever-changing, ever, you know, reinventing itself, I mean, through the ages. I think that's what's the most exciting thing about it, and I hope it continues to be that. So is it the shared human experience that draws the audiences to the tale of Genji generation after generation? Or is it something more personal? Honestly, it used to be my favorite thing to read on the subway in New York City because nothing can take you farther away from the grime and crowds than being immersed in the, the Heian court. The attraction of the tale of Genji can only be answered by its readers. Dr. Diecheveri makes her recommendation. I would just urge people to pick it up and read it, and I think you'll get swept up. For National Public Radio, I'm John Lonius.